Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is Friday, the 5th of April, 2024 afternoon, which means that the priming that I did yesterday has had plenty of time to cure. We can go ahead and get all of these uh, top main skins dimpled. They're not quite ready to rivet on yet because I still owe dimpling um, the top and the bottom of the aft spar. So I'll have to get that done as well. Um, other than that, we're just gonna get right into it. There is one thing that I wanted to mention. Um, a year ago, maybe, uh, I connected with a uh, prospective builder through the channel. His name is Tim. Well, he's up and running right now. He actually just received his wing kit uh, yesterday. He has completed his empennage, or probably even more complete than mine is. Uh, but he's got a channel going, and it's really good. If you like this channel, you like that one. Uh, so check it out. It's called T-Flight. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Um, go show Tim some love. He's got better intro music than I do. Uh, anyways, uh, oh, and he only lives about 30 minutes away from me. So uh, you might see him in here helping me rivet this when my arms get too short. Um, yeah, let's build an airplane. Okay, so today, like yesterday, it's a lot more of the boring prep kind of stuff, which is apparently what a lot of airplane building is. Um, Let's talk about this DRDT2 setup that I have. You've seen it before. I've got some sort of tracks set up uh, between my two tables so I can run the whole thing flush on the table. I like this setup because as you see, especially when we get into the big um, outboard skins, I'm able to keep a lot of that floppy skin on the table while I'm dimpling. Um, I do want to say, though, that uh, when I decided to set mine up this way, it's because it, it seemed like a simpler design than, than building the table that you see a lot of guys use that sits up on top of your workbench. But having used it for a while, I'll say this. Um, you have to be able, I'm on a little low uh, rolling shop stool um, to do this. You have to be able to get close to your work to see what you're doing so that you don't punch any holes where they don't belong and uh, now I can sort of see the advantage of having the um, the the table type set up because you're able to stand up and still do your work and in in a standing position you have a little bit more lever leverage on that arm when you're doing a few thousand of these things that um, that can come, become uh, pretty tedious and, and fatiguing believe it or not um, so yeah, I do like this setup, but um, if you don't want to uh, be forced to sit down and roll on the floor and, and kind of put your arm or your shoulder in a weird position, this may not be the best setup for you. Now, you can see that I have it set up so that the male die is coming down to the female die. And the reason I want to address this specifically is because in the very beginning, when I was doing the empennage, I thought, man, it's a lot easier with those skins that have the big, big, the big fold in them to flip it around, have the male die on the bottom so that the floppy end of the curved piece could be tilting upwards. It's easier to work it around the, around the DRDT2 than it is if it were hanging down off the table. And what I learned, what many other builders have learned, is that when you do it that way, there's a really high probability that you're gonna do the thing you thought you would never do because you've seen everybody else do it, and that is punch a random hole in your skin that's not supposed to be there. And the reason is these skins are really floppy, and if you're setting a hole down over the male die, imagine the male die is on the bottom, and you're trying to manipulate and maneuver the skin to get it in position, you're probably holding it or the, the, just the mass of the skin itself is holding a little bit of tension. And as you're bringing the female die down, it's going to happen at some point. It's going to pop off the die right as they come together and create an extra hole. So uh, I am one of probably countless builders who have seen so many others um, punch extra holes in their skins and say, I'll never do that. I've seen enough guys do it to not make that mistake. And guess what? I did. Uh, which is why I learned 
put the male dye on top. It's much easier to control um, because once you bring the, the male dye down into the hole that you're dimpling, you can ease it down there nice and carefully. Then it's secured. It cannot pop off because it is uh, contacting the female dye as well. And then you can bring the pressure down on it. You still can't go fast. You never can go fast, but this is by far the safest way to do it. So that's my little rant on dimpling the skins. Now, um, in a few minutes, you'll see me go back to, <clears throat> you might notice that I have the skins hanging on the, um, on the wings right there. That's just to get them out of the way until I need to work on them. But, um, I think I mentioned in the intro that I, that I still owe some dimpling on the aft spar of the wing, which as you're looking at it right now is on the, the part hanging down towards the ground. Um, I did one. I think I did the left wing, uh, the dimpling of the aft spar. Um, the aft spar is kind of strange. Um, on the top of the wing, the flange bends toward the trailing edge, and on the bottom of the wing, it, it the flange bends uh, toward the front or the leading edge of the wing. Sort of, it makes kind of like an S or a Z. <clears throat> and those flanges are not at a 90 degree angle. So the one on the trail on the top that, that bends toward the trailing edge, it bends a little bit past 90 degrees and it feels pretty uncomfortable to use the squeezer to dimple it because um, when you do, it, it feels like it's, it's relieving that bend. It's taking some of the bend out of it. Um, it's not substantial. Um, but it is bothersome and I've just sort of made peace with it. Um, when, uh, I go to clean up those dimples, um, if I feel like there's a section that is maybe bent out a little bit from its original position, then I can take the hand seamer and gently put it back in place. There is a lot of work that needs to be done on those dimples, um, because they, there's, there's a lot of material there. You have the aft spar, and then there are a few sections along that aft spar where there are doublers in there, and then the skin itself. And so after you dimple the aft spar to accept the dimple on the skin, you need to then, um, as they say the plans, touch up the dimples um, with like a deburring tool or a countersink. I'll use a deburring tool to take just a little bit more material out of there so that um, the dimple on the skin nests in there better. Although the plans do say this is really just a cosmetic thing. It's not a critical thing. So don't take away too much material. And I guess that also means that you could get away with not doing it at all. Um, I'll make a little test patch and I'll go along all of those dimples on the spar and see how I feel about them. Uh, so that's what you see me, I think I'll be moving on to now. Did I find, yes, okay. Uh, that, that took a while. Um, those are a lot of holes to dimple. Um, so I think between the wing walk doublers, the inboard skins, the outboard skins, so six total pieces, um, three hours of dimpling. Um, yeah, so uh, what you see me doing here is running along. This would be the top side of the right wing aft spar. And on this one, I am dimpling every hole where I don't feel any interference from uh, a rivet. So where those ribs come down to the spar, there's a rivet right there that um, the squeezer on the inside there will kind of catch when you try to squeeze it. Um, and what I discovered later is once I get over at the very end of the video, when I get to the back of the shop there, the left wing, and I take those skins off, I find, oh, I actually dimpled that whole thing already. And it's really not that bad. So, uh, today's work Saturday will be to finish up those dimples. And also I noticed, uh, as where you see me right here uh, a moment ago, when I was over there, I noticed that none of those main ribs are dimpled on the bottom of the wing. They're all dimpled on the top side where we're about to rivet, but I still owe all the dimpling on the ribs on the bottom side, which doesn't actually have to happen now. Even with the main skins attached, there will be plenty of room to 
more than plenty of room to get in there with the squeezer. So anyways, uh, today will be more dimple dimpling prep. I don't know if I'll do any riveting today. I haven't really tested my arms to see if they're long enough. So we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for being here.